concluded Lita. Okay, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Uh, it's good to have you on board. So uh, let's jump straight into our weekly market outlook. And to begin, we'll be looking at the fundamental news expectant for the week, okay? So we're here on forexfactory.com uh, and we are looking at the entire news reports for the week. Now, today is the 6th of March, which happens to be the first full week. Not necessarily, we are last, last week, um, Last week was part February, part March, but this is the first full um, week of March. And uh, we tend to have some high impact news. For example, you could see that on Wednesday, we have lots of high impact news from Canada and also the US. We'll also be having um, the non-farm employment change on Friday. Uh, so, and also the employment change and unemployment rates from CAD on Friday. So um, that's quite important. And then next week we'll have CPI reports um, on the US. So now um, for today, there's no much. We just had the CHF, which came out better than expected. And then we are going to expect in the Canadian, uh, which will come out by 4 p.m. Um, West African time. And then on Tuesday, we have cash rates as the, the Reserve Bank of Australia would release their rate statement. It's expected to, stick, to be increased from 3.35 to 3.60. Now, if this if it comes out as expected, 3.60, um, we could expect some movement in the, in, the, in the Aussie because it's a good report. If it comes out less than expected, uh, then we could see some weakness. So if it comes out... Um, much, much higher than expected, we'll see even higher movement. So keep that in mind. If you have any Aussie trade pending or you're looking to get into Aussie positions, pay attention to the fact that 4.30 a.m. on, so on Tuesday, that's tomorrow, there would be the cash rate statements from the Reserve Bank of Australia. And um, also follow that up by, 10, uh, by the, the governor of the Reserve Bank of Australia would also speak. And depending on how bullish or hawkish he sounds, uh, if, it's, if they think the economy is expanding and they are looking to um, raise the rate even further, those kind of things, um, traders will be paying attention to them as to whether they are bullish or you know dovish or hawkish. Then on Wednesday, we have some rate statement from, from the US and also rate statement from CAD. It's expected that um, um, the Canadian rate statement would stay the same at 4.05%. I don't see why they should increase. The economy is progressively expanding and um, I don't see a need for them to want to raise the rates. But if it's raised, uh, they expect the cards to shoot up. If it's not up, if it is, I don't expect it to be dropped either. I don't think they can drop the rates. But if it's dropped then bad, then that would be bad for CAD. But I probably expect it to stay the same. That means um, it may not have an instant, so even if it does, it might just be a whipsaw movement in price, okay? And then pay attention to Powell's um, statements by 4 p.m. as regards the U.S. dollar. And then on Friday, that's where we have the elephant in the room, the non-farm unemployment change, the average hourly ending, the unemployment rates, both for the U.S. and the CAD. Um, the non-farm employment change is expected, or sometimes called non-farm payroll, expected to be... Um, uh, 260,000, uh, which is uh, way less than the previous month, which was uh, 517,000. So if it's worse than 260K, then the dollar is going to even fall further. If it comes out better than expected by a good margin, then we can expect dollar strength. So pay attention to that on Friday. Okay, so with those in mind, let's jump over to the chat and look at some... Um, uh, system basically some setups, right? And what we could look now. Um, on my screen, okay, I have the USD JPY. Now, the reason I have this on my screen is because I wanted to show um quickly something a very if, uh, this is a lengthy consolidation. So this is the weekly time frame for Aussie yen, right? And it's been consolidating in this range for what's this? How many bars is this? Uh, that's about eighty. That's about three one eight thousand three hundred and thirty two days, right? So that's more than three years. What have we seen for a very very long time? Um, since nineteen ninety one, something like that. It's been in this range for a really really long time because this is the weekly chart, 
And um, now I'm not anticipating we see a brick higher or anything. But what we notice, what you would notice is this, that, um, so where's my highlighter? What you notice is size tends to, you know, bounce away from this range, right? Um, it tends to bounce away from this range. You could see that anytime, you know, it's bouncing from what you call resistant and support, even though I don't treat it conventionally. When price gets to resistance, it pulls back to support. When it gets to support, it pulls back to resistance. So we could expect price to continue to do this until the market either breaks this high or breaks this low. Now that's a, that's for a future point. Um, that's if if and when that happens, um, that that would be is future concern. But for now, what we're looking is since we are anticipating, since we are, since we've noticed that price tends to go from low to high and from high to low, and now we basically came back to a previous low, there is a good chance that price will want to come back to highs, maybe like that, or even uh, an area like this high here, so something like this. That is a good chance a price might want to come back to um, come back and, you know, Tap into areas like like this, right? Now, so what does that mean, or what does that mean, or what can that mean for us? Basically, uh, what we can start to do is because I like to treat in the direction of the trend. In long term, this market is ranging, but short term, well, this market is trending bullish, right? And uh, and not even really short term. We're talking of mid term, right? Um, the market is bullish, so I like to look for buying opportunities in the bullish market. Therefore, I want to look for setups to buy this market. Now, if we begin to break down um, even further and go down to the daily chart, so we've understood this. So, if you, um, if you, if I don't know if any of you spot in any of my um, one of the trainings we had, which is MTFA multi time frame analysis, where you try and do a top down analysis of price based on the higher time frame and then factor in. Um, that overall structure into your trade idea, okay? So now we have an idea where we're looking for buying opportunities in this market because there's a good chance price is interested in continuing to push up. Now, if we drop down to, okay, we drop down to the daily chart here, you can see that we have the, um, you know, this very clear bullish structure where price is making higher highs and higher lows and higher highs and higher lows and higher highs. Um, basically, we could expect price to continue to do such a thing where it keeps making higher highs and higher lows. And as it stands, we still have to respect the fact that price is still bullish because as far as we're concerned, price has not made a substantial lower low. Um, and looking at based on that theorem, which we do in order to really start to look for bearish movement, we want to see price break down twice. So a situation where the price makes a you know, basically like this, then we say, okay, this is a double break. And then we can start to look for sell. So basically this market is still quite bullish. And based on our raw structure, it means looking for buying opportunity in this market might be more profitable. At least that's the part of least resistance. So now we ask ourselves, where could we get in on this street? Where could we look to get involved in the position? You see how price made this basically double bottom from here. And let me take this one out. Price made this double bottom, and within this area here, within this inner structure, you could see it's making higher highs and higher lows. So price is bullish on all the time frames that we've looked at it so far, even within this time frame. So what we can do now is look for setups within smaller time frames to maybe get involved, targeting our overall areas. Obviously, we'll be targeting these highs and even much further highs above. So how can we look to get involved here? What would I be looking for? Remember, this is the weekly market outlook. Well, um, in that case, this would be the, the basically the structure I'm quite interested in. This, right? Uh, something like so, right? Um, we do this like this. You can see we have this, not the, not the clearest of break, but we have the, they had this break of structure here. Um, so basically, I can, uh, I will be looking for opportunities to get involved buying within this, with that structure in mind. So where are the areas? So if you took part in, so we had a class, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, where we talked about other blocks, um, that just, we discussed on other blocks and all. 
and this is a fine order block with a leftover imbalance. So I'll be looking at this area and anticipating for a bullishness. I'll be looking for bullishness in price if we get down to what this um, red area that I just highlighted now, right? So if we get down to this red area, I'll be looking for buying opportunity. What will my what will my targets be like? I'll be looking to target these highs. Now, the trade setup would be something like this. Now, remember, like I always told you in my trading, in my video on confirmation is I always trade with confirmation, right? So I don't, just because I'm interested in buying from a certain area, doesn't mean I'll just set pending orders and wait for price to get there. So what I want to do or what I'll be looking to do is to see price drop down. I'm only interested in buying this if price drops down into this area. Now, if price drops down into this area, I want to see confirmation of bullishness to get involved and take this higher. So even though all of this, you know, my my I, I put this stop loss down here, it doesn't necessarily mean my stop loss would be like that. So here's what I mean, right? So let's say um, price, remember this red zone is the area I'm interested in buying from. So what that means is if price continues to come down, I'll just be waiting patiently until price gets here. Now price could get here. What I'd like to see is confirmation that price wants to break higher. So confirmation for you could be something like maybe a bullish candlestick rejection, it could be double bottom, it could be counter trend line break, um, it could be structural shift. So whereby price you know, shifts structure within a smaller time frame. It could even be Wyckoff um, schematic. So whichever, once you find confirmation, then you could use that to get involved, start getting this area. So within that, with, with that in mind, if I look to get involved in a trade, it would be something like this. And my stop loss would be just below the structure mid or below the reason I got involved. And then I'll be targeting these highs, right? Now, this, this does not mean that you should put a pending order here because here is one thing price can also do, right? Price could very well decide to get here and just blow past it. Now, just because price blows, you know, doesn't respect this area, does it negate the entire outlook? The answer is no, because this is our low to high. That means as long as price does not take out this low, there's a good chance price is going to come up to take out this high, right? Which is why if there's no confirmation, or even if I get involved in a trade with confirmation, it ended up failing. So let's say, um, Let's say I am waiting for confirmation. Let's assume I even get that confirmation and I start buying, right? So let's say I get involved in a buy and then um, price does this, breaks down and takes me out for a loss. That doesn't mean that, yeah, um, I took a loss here, but that doesn't negate the entire outlook that we're looking for because what that means is, well, that's it. price is not ready to start going up yet. Because price could very well, um, you know, make and give us another confirmation here. And then we get involved in that and take it up here. As long as price does not take out this low, I'll be expecting price to take out this high. So you get the idea with this trade. I'll be looking to buy up to this area as long as price does not take out this low. Okay. Now, um, there's even further explanation with regions down here, but I'm not going to jump into that. I'll talk, I'll, I'll explain, I'll discuss more in detail on some of these trades in my uh, my class tomorrow and Wednesday, which is the cutting edge trading room. But that class is only available to clients who have funded the account. So you join me on those live trading sessions. We have them Tuesdays and Wednesdays most of the times. Um, so I'll break down some other trade opportunities in case um the market, uh, you know, what I'm looking to do. Should the market look to break some of this area? But I like quite like the setup. Looking for buy opportunity from this red zone here. Uh, so this is the four hour chart. So there's quite some room. You know, this movement, if price does do that, that would be something like 100 and just about 200 pips, right? From low to high. And then uh, if you are probably, if that happens, I probably would look to send out some setup on the Telegram channel. So let's, that's, that's with AUDJPY. Let's jump over to gold, XAU, um, USD. Okay, so. Okay, so on XAU USD on gold, now let's look at the daily charts. Um, now, 
here's what you notice. I know when you look at gold, most people are seeing a very bearish gold, which is not wrong. However, all you just need to do is go up some time frame and see the big picture. You notice that, um, so where is my pen? So you'd notice that since making this double bottom down here, price has since been taking out highs. Price has been taking out highs for fun. And in doing that, the market has posted this very aggressive uh, bearish push like this. All right, so this very aggressive bullish, sorry, bullish push as so soon is then followed by a bearish um, consolidation, bearish um, reversal or retracement. So there's a good chance that price is bouncing off to then continue to go up. So personally, I am bullish on gold, right? I'm bullish on gold. I actually started, I was actually, I've actually been buying from down here and I'm looking to hold this to this area. Now, um, for the week, I'm still bullish on gold. Even within this, uh, within current areas, I'm still looking for opportunities to buy gold, um, with obviously based on my own trading system or based on my own trading style and uh, trading rules. Um, my target is this high is up here, right? So this high up here at around 19, uh, 1955, 70 area. And I'll be looking, I'm looking to buy this up there now. Um, let's break it down. Let's go down even further. Look at the one hour time frame and see if we could spot something to trade. So now remember, we have an idea where we're looking for buying opportunity, right? So we're looking for buying opportunities in this market because of the structure price is closing. We know that there's a good, you know, obviously price can would always decide to do whatever it wants to do, and it could very well continue to break down. Uh, our goal is to find confirmation based on our system, right? Now, I'm not interested in looking for sell opportunity, no matter how beautiful it presents itself. I'm really interested in looking for buys because of the story I've told myself. Success in trading is usually about the story you tell yourself and how you allow that story to play out. So what this means is, well, you can see that we had, um, so let me use this. You can see we had this uh, breakout of here. We have a breakout of here, uh, like so. And then we have, why is this not? Ah, okay. So one hour chat. Yeah, so we had a breakout of here, right? Since from this low, we had this breakout. Then we had another break of structure, and then we have another break of structure, and then we have another break of structure. So basically, this is the most recent low that formed this high. So from low to high. Um, this whole area is potential range for price to then go back and take out this high. Now, here's the thing. Um, some other, what I call them, SMC or people who claim uh, to be smart money traders would also be looking at this. And obviously, they might not be wrong. Um, but if you look at this, so let's see, if you look at this from the four hour chat here, um, somebody could look at this and say, uh, it's my rectangle so okay so you could see some sort of other block there that prices are appearing to sell off from now this could very well be a beautiful trade to sell but remember at least the way i trade i i'm not interested in selling this um the only reason i'll start to look to sell this is if price comes back down and take out the slope and in which case even if i look to sell it to just be very small, right? Um, this low here is the low that price needs to take out if sellers are really serious about pushing price lower. And until that happens, all I'll be looking for is confirmation to buy. Even if price comes down here, I'll still be looking for confirmation to buy because that could even offer us a, a better trade opportunity to buy. Now, Basically, you see this leftover order block here with imbalances where price came in, tapped in, and pulled away from. If you look at, let's say, the 15 minute time frame, you could even begin to see some structural shifts. This is something I was actually waiting for all through the morning, wanting to see that. But this here is the area, um, this is the range I am really working with, right? So that's the structure I'm paying attention to. And if price, you know, I want to see price drop down within this region. So as price is dropping down, I am excited, basically, even though I'm not selling or anything. I'm just waiting for, for the market to maybe give me some reason to get, begin to buy. And what I'll be looking for is structural shift where price 
begins to shift bullish. And I'll use, to, I'll use that as a catalyst to continue buying and taking it up, up, up. Now, this kind of setup here is how you know liquidity get run. Liquidity is created and liquidity then gets run because that four hour leftover order block, which is causing a lot of people to look at this area as a good sell position, will just cause a lot of sellers, right? A lot of bears to be emotionally involved in looking to sell this because everybody's trying to, oh, this is a beautiful setup, this is a beautiful order, but not necessarily paying attention to the bigger picture. Now I'm I could be very wrong and price goes down and 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 um and they they are right but the truth is more often than not price would would create this sort of liquidity and then run it so my anticipation is we would see this movement as if we're having a bearishness and then we will see that break up to the upside so I'm looking for that opportunity to participate once I get that transition um in in the in the in the in the trend and then look for buying opportunities to take this higher now even if now here's the thing even if price continues to go down right so price continues to go down from here there's no I'm not still interested in buying because even if price drops down to this region I will be looking for uh, sorry I'm not interested in selling because even if I drop down to the region, I'll be looking for buying opportunities because of the structure, both on the daily chart, um, the weekly chart, and this four hour and daily break. So you see, we had this breakout to this upside. You could you see that break on the daily chart as well, right? You see, we we had this break to the upside, which is in con which is in in conjunction with the overall structure, this bullish structure here. That's actually why I'm I'm more interested in buying this, right? So um, I'm interested in buying from current area. I'm also interested in buying uh, if price drops down deeper. No problem whatsoever for me with that one. Okay, um, so that's what I'm looking for um, for today, right? For today, uh, this is the range I'm working with and looking for bullish push within this area those of you who treat fibonacci you could just plot your fibonacci from here to here and then maybe look to trade the 618 or 786 however it is you look to trade but the idea for me is i'm looking for confirmation to start buying and then take this high okay so that's um gold for me and um i think we still have time for some more um so we'll take um uh, euro us team Uh, so we'll take Euro USD on this. Uh, US, USD had a very beautiful trade on this one. Um, so a couple of beautiful trades on this one. I, I think I talked about this in one of our classes last week or thereabouts where we're talking about. Um, I used this to explain other blocks and then uh, I talked about another trade setup. So let's look at the daily charts here. So you'd see uh, that we are bullish very clearly. We went from this bearish channel and then we broke out of that area here and since then the market has sensed, since posted bullishness and we had this low here right so this low down here all to be all the way up to this high here and all this movements down all i was waiting for was confirmation to start buying right so confirmation to start buying why because this is a protected low and this is the target liquidity as far as i'm concerned and unless this low is broken, I anticipate price is going to want to come up toward this area, okay? Now, sorry, just a minute. Assume this okay. So, like I was saying, um, okay, so my 
outlook is as long as price does not take out this low, there's a good well, I there's a good chance price is going to come up and take out this high. And I was actually anticipating, waiting patiently for price to tap into this region. So I'll show you that area on the S smaller time frame. So let's drop down a bit. Okay, so you'd see that area here on the smaller time frame here. If you look to your left here, you see the left of all that block, the reason I had this area highlighted, right? This is the one hour chart. And I got involved in a trade act. And actually, I'm in two trades on this one. Um, based on, so there's a white curve accumulation schematic that I'll call here on the um, five minute chart, which I used to get involved, right? Uh, anyway, there's no point to explain in too much detail, but the point is you can start to see that the market that was bearish, so making lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, since it tapped into this area, right, began to make higher lows and higher highs and higher lows and higher highs, which is the reason I got involved in another trade here and spitting at least a potential run of this liquidity and for the highs. So that said, EURUSD, I am bullish um, on this one as far as price does not go below the slow, right? I am in already like three positions um, and I'm also looking to get involved. So for instance, if price, here, where price is currently is not necessarily a good place to buy, except you're looking to trade this on a smaller time frame and then you look to manage your risk on that smaller time frame. But if say price breaks above this high, like so, let's say price breaks above this high, right? This low here, so that new high, would be the new area you're looking at. Then if price begins to drop down, you could look at something like this and then look to buy and run this high. So, but overall, you're still trying to take this all the way up here, right? Um, I know this looks like a lot of gibberish, but that's the idea, that's the way I'm looking at this. If price breaks, we get a retracement, we trade that and we keep. Now, sometimes you don't get um, those pullbacks, right? So for instance, uh, let me take this out and just, uh, and just, uh, and just, uh, okay. So for instance, you can see in this case, we had this low price broke out here and then we had this pullback. You see, we had a very nice pullback to previous other blocks. Again, we had this break and then price pulled back we got another trade, right? So three trades, one for me here on the smaller time frame, another here, another here. Now, sometimes the price does not pull back enough. It might just continue to move. What you don't want to do is start chasing the market. If you don't, if if the market does not meet your criteria, don't chase the market because that's how people blow and lose a lot of funds. Um, you would eventually catch a trade that meets your criteria and then you get involved. So basically, we're looking for the run of liquidity to the upside. On this one, I'm going, I'm going to be looking for that until we get all the way up here, right? So my positions here, so for example, the trades, my trade here and here, I, so I've already moved, I've already collected partial on the partial profits on this trade down here, and my stop loss is now at break even. On this trade here as well, I already collected partial, my stop loss is at break even. On this trade here, I've not collected partial, I'll take partial when price comes back up here, and my although my surplus is also at break even. So even if price comes back down, I, I would also still be looking for opportunities to buy as long as price does not take out this low down here. Okay. <laughs> this looks like a child's plea. Okay, so I hope you you I, I hope you still get the concept of what we I just explained now. Okay. Um so I think those were the the, those are the three instruments I really wanted to talk about. Um, this I don't really go in, into so much details explaining um, all the pairs on weekly market outlook. We just look at some key ones. And then our classes on Tuesday and Wednesdays where we look at cut, our cutting edge class, we would look to um, look at all the currency pairs as much as our time can permit. We we'll look to look at them and see if we can spot trading um, trading opportunities in those instruments uh, together, okay? So, so far, so good. I hope you were able to capture. So we talked about um, Aussie Yen. 
we talked about the opportunities for, for the buy opportunities there, gold. We also discussed that extensively and we looked at, we did a top-down analysis of gold uh, and looked for setups on that as well. And similarly, we also looked at Euro USD and we're also looking for bullish opportunities there. Now, um, usually fundamentals and technicals tend to align uh, if that's the will of the market maker, basically, if that's the will of the composite man. Um, so I won't be surprised if we see a weak, uh, a weakened dollar, if dollar weakens for that to support this. Or we could even have a strengthened dollar, but then we have a whipsaw reaction to then continue to move in the other direction. But either way, um, what I don't tend to do is treat the news, but I always try to pay attention to it so I can manage my open positions uh, so I don't give back profits unnecessarily. Okay, um, so that's much for me for today. I hope you enjoyed the class. If you do, um, do leave a like and comments. Uh, that is always very well appreciated.